Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar in our monthly webinar series. Today, we will be going over everything that is involved with posting and also processing your tuition fees. So before we get started, just a couple of quick things. If we have not met before, my name is Marie Baldwin, and I am the Client Success Training Specialist here at Jackrabbit. And in the background today, I am joined uh, by Rebecca. Rebecca is joining us from Calgary, Alberta, and she will be answering any questions that you might have while I am presenting. And then as well, uh, at the very end, I will just quickly try to go through any questions that may come up. So I'm just gonna give everybody just a moment to get in. Hi, Ashley from Regina. So if you wanna get used to the chat, it is there on the right hand side of your screen. So if you want, you can just pop right in there and let us all know where you are joining from. Um, I'm actually in Newfoundland, Canada. Um, and full disclosure, I do live close to a harbor and we actually have a thing called the Symphony of the Horns that does happen daily during the summer. So if we happen to hear what sounds like foghorns, uh, I apologize ahead of time. I have no control over that one whatsoever. Oh, let's see who we got here. Oh, we got somebody from White Court, Alberta. Nice. Annette from Florida. I'm just having a quick look to see where everybody's joining from all over Canada and the U.S. I don't see anybody outside of North America yet. So just a couple of quick housekeeping items in case you have not joined a webinar with us before using this platform. Uh, the recording uh, will automatically be emailed to you later on this week. And like I just mentioned, you can always use the chat to ask any questions that you want. Uh, while I am presenting and doing my demo in the database, my screen will go away. Therefore, my screen share will be bigger. If you wanna make it a little bit bigger, you can always minimize your chat. And there is just a, in the top right-hand corner there, you'll see an arrow that points to the right. And then that will just make everything a little bit larger for you. I'm just having another quick look here. Okay. Uh, if you have any uh, connection issues, you can always click on, uh, if you're on a PC, on F5, and that will help to uh, refresh your screen. And as well, if you are having any other issues, we do recommend if you can, but I know a lot of you are multitasking, uh, to close out all of your other screens. And then that way it'll just make the viewing a little bit easier for you. So before I start with uh, my screen share and everything regarding posting tuition, I just wanna go over a couple of quick ways that you can connect with us. So from within your Jackrabbit database, you can always click on the question mark to reach out to Jackrabbit support. You can request a phone call, you can send in a quick chat, and then you can also send in a ticket. Uh, some people might wonder what you know really is the difference. Basically, a quick chat, it's a one and done, one question. If you know it's something that you're really stuck with and that we may have to research or look into user activity, uh, kindly just please submit a ticket with as much information as you possibly can. Uh, as well, in the top right-hand corner of your database, you do have access to our Jackrabbit Resource Center. And there is a plethora of information in there for you. You have access to other webinars. You can see where in-person trainings are happening and as well, other enhancements and also Jackrabbit's Idea Portal. Uh, also, speaking of webinars, uh, all of our webinars are uploaded uh, bi-monthly. Uh, for the live webinars and our on-demand webinars. Uh, you can find that at jackrabbitclass.com forward slash support forward slash webinars. And then as well, uh, especially this time of year, if you are getting geared up for your fall session, you may be hiring some new staff. So you may not necessarily be a brand new Jackrabbit uh, organization or user, but if you do have new staff, you can always through our help center under our training options, you can enroll your new staff in our Jackrabbit training system. And that is a self-paced, self-guided training system. And you can actually sign up to get email confirmations when your new staff or employees complete certain modules. And then last, certainly not least, is our Jackrabbit Facebook users group. So you just need to search that 
within Facebook and we do that every single person that comes in. So if you can, please make sure uh, if you use a different name on Facebook, maybe from what your user ID is, just add in your user ID or what, what organization you are with. Uh, the Facebook group, it is great. We post all kinds of marketing information in there, upcoming trainings, but the real value in the Facebook group is that you can actually search it and just search for different topics that necessar don't necessarily apply exactly to Jackrabbit, but for you running your business. So just quickly, what we will be going over today. So we're going to go over your tuition and discounting setup. Uh, I'll go over assigning discounts to your classes. And believe me, it is easy peasy. Uh, and then we're going to go over posting your tuition fees. Uh, we're going to go over posting them now. And then also setting up to post them later with our Jackrabbit automation. And then after that, we're going to go over the processing of your tuition fees so you can process them now and just like with your tuition you can also choose to process them later and have that automation set up for you so i'm just going to quickly check the chat before i start my screen share just one second awesome thank you for adding in those links rebecca so it'll be just one moment i'm just going to start my screen share Sorry about that. There we go. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So like I said there in the very beginning, if you do want to make this bigger, you can always go ahead and minimize your chat. Just a moment. There, that'll make it a little bit bigger for you. So the very first thing that we are going to go over is setting up your tuition settings. So everything for setting up your tuition settings, you will find that here under your gear icon, settings, tuition and discounting. So you will see we do have five different options underneath your tuition setting. So for today, I am going to go over every single one of them. And I am also going to go through the entire process of creating a brand new discount rule. And then we will later assign that to some classes. So the very first one we will see is manage your billing settings. So you are able to post either by class tuition fee or you can post by total hours. Uh, total hours is more commonly used within the dance world, but I have seen music schools, gyms, others use total hours as well. Uh, in my database where I am doing this for training, I do have both set up and I will demo those for you. Uh, class tuition fee is exactly that. It's whatever you put on your class summary page for that tuition amount. And then I'm just gonna bring up your fee schedule. So right here, you can see if you're posting by total hours. So when you post by total hours, basically you're kind of already building in or building, sorry, in your discount. So you can see right here, I have one hour of classes is $50. Two hours of classes, it's not going to be 100. I'm discounting it and it's going to be 90 and then so on and so forth. Do note at line seven, I've got 100 hours and I know it is a really, really large number, but if you are using by total hours, we do recommend that you add for your last line, a high number with your max tuition amount. That way, just in case, uh, right now on line six, you'll see I've got for a total of six hours. If I've got somebody that comes in and let's just say, for example, might take eight hours of classes, they are still going to have this amount posted. I'm just going to return out of this. 
And then next, when does your billing cycle start? So you can have one billing cycle, you can use them all, your options. You can choose each week on a certain day of the week. Mine, I have it set up for Monday. Uh, each month on, and you can choose a certain date. I've got the first. Uh, you can also choose to post strictly by your session dates if you're using sessions. And then also I have checked custom. So I've got every six weeks and then mine began on July the 3rd. Oopsies. Just a sec. So from your managed billing settings, you can get to your free schedule. You can also get to that exact same schedule page right here. So it's going to go back again. And then next we have your discount rules. So this is where any rules that you currently have set up, you can come in here, you can see them. Uh, just take note under class status. I've got no discounts, not assigned. Military family under class. I don't have a military family discount assigned to any classes, but I do have it assigned to my military families. And then next, I've got a multi-class, multi-student uh, discount that is assigned to classes and note that is not assigned to any families. If you're not sure about your rule and you already have it set up and you want to check it out, all you need to do is you can just click on this little eyeball here and then you can see it just pops up and then don't forget you have the option right here. If your base tuition, let's just say for example, maybe it's $50 and you want to see how your discount works, you'll see the numbers down here change. It does automatically default to be 100. Uh, your first tab will show both of your discounts if you're using both, just what your multi-class discount would look like, and then if you had a multi-student discount. And then I'm going to come back to this one in just a little bit when we go through the entire process of setting up a brand new discount rule. I'm just going to turn out of this and just quickly check the chat. And then next, what we have are your update total hours discount settings. So like I just said, basically when you're setting up for your total hours, you're kind of already building in that discount. Like with the example I just gave, one hour is $50, two hours is actually $90. So I am kind of already pulling in a discount for multi-classes. But what this one is, if I do have multiple students. So I can come in here and then I can pre-assign what my discounts are. I've got it selected to use the discount rate listed for each student. And you do have the option to add up all of the students in the family and if you want it to give that discount. So how that would work, uh, right now if I had three students, it would automatically give all three students a 3% discount. Uh, the way I have it set up is that student one would get zero, so no discount, student two would get a 2%, and then student three would get the 3%. And then in what order would you like to apply the discount? Uh, normally, and I'm going to shoot with probably 95% of you that are posting, uh, you will want to say that your highest tuition gets the lowest discount. It's going to come up here, it's going to pop back. And then next we have your pro rating options. So one thing to note uh, within Jackrabbit, when it does uh, come to pro rating, uh, you will, uh, your pro rating is based on there being say four Mondays, four Tuesdays, four Thursdays, for example, uh, within your month. Uh, so using that base of 100, each individual class would be $25. So do you prorate partial tuition? Yes or no? So when we say prorate partial tuition, if a student enrolls, let's just say for the middle of August, which is what we are going to be posting for in a little bit, then it would prorate that. So it, Jackrabbit will go back, it will look and see how many days they can actually 
for that they will be enrolled for that class and then post the tuition accordingly. Same thing if somebody has a drop. And next, do you prorate tuition when a class lands on a close date? Yes or no. So to add your close dates, just to let you know really quickly, over here under your gear, settings, general, and right here are your close dates right here. So I've got them all set to prorate. If you needed to add a date, you could add it right there. So to come back here. And then next we've got when tuition is prorated, do you also prorate the discount? So your multi-class, multi-student, or your family discount. Uh, again, I've got mine set to yes. That is totally up to you. If you're new and just getting in at setting it up or you're going through and restructuring your tuition fees, uh, it's a good idea even to come in here and set it to yes, do a, a posting preview and just see what your totals are and then come back out, set it to no and then do the preview again just so you can see what the difference financially would be for you. And then next, when using the billing, billing method of by class fee, do you charge extra when a class meets more than the standard number of days in the monthly billing cycle? So like I just said, using that $100 class as an example, uh, this month or the month of August, I know for a fact that there are five Wednesdays. So do I want to charge $100 for August? or do I want to charge $125? So kind of like how when you prorate it uh, for a closed date or you prorate it for a drop or future enroll, you can also do that for your classes uh, when they are on closed dates. Just to let you know, closed dates are global. So it's not just one class, it's your entire facility. Everything is set uh, as a closed date. Uh, one other thing to note as well is that if you do use closed dates, uh, you are not actually required to take attendance on those days. So that helps as well. And the next, we have your tuition fee settings. So now we're going to click on your manage settings. So because I do have a uh, by class fee and by total hours selected, that is why I am seeing both options. So I've got my class fee here. And then I've got my total hours settings here. If you are only posting by class fee or only posting by total hours, you will only see that option here. So uh, just going right from the top to the bottom, how do you want to post tuition when a student enrolls during web registration, quick registration, or via the enroll button or the links or via your parent portal? So your options are to not post tuition, which some people do use that because you might want to have people enroll, probably check their enrollments, and then you will go ahead and post their tuition in case things need to be adjusted. Uh, do you want to post full tuition? So ignore the tuition discount rules. Do you want to post only discounted tuition? Do you want to post prorated tuition, just only on your prorating option? So even if you have discount rules set up, when they enroll online, Maybe you only just want to give the option to prorate, and I'm going to speak to all of that in just a moment. And then the last option uh, is to post your discounted and prorated tuition. So some of you may be wondering, like, why all of these different options? Like, I want to post my discounts. I want to post my proration. Some organizations actually charge the full amount for a student's first month within classes. So if you check to post full tuition, so if I were to check this here, all this affects is when somebody is enrolling into a class, their entire amount will be posted. And then when I come in the following month and I use my transactions post tuition fees, it is going to pull in those discounts. So it's only just preventing the discounts up on enrollment. So I'm gonna keep mine here. And then, because I've got my posted discounted and prorated tuition, how do you want to count your multi-class discounts when a student enrolls during web registration, quick registration, via the enroll buttons or links, that's from your website, or via the parent portal? So you do have three options here. So you can allow your multi-class discounts to be counted across different sessions. They can be counted across different category ones. And then you can allow your multi-class discounts to be counted across different tuition discount rules. 
So again, all of this is very specific to your organization. Uh, just to give just a little bit more of an explanation, uh, right now I am currently running session, uh, summer session, and I currently have my fall classes that students are enrolling in. If I had allowed multi-class discounts to be counted across different sessions, if my student was taking two classes in summer and three classes in the fall, it would actually give the discount for a total of five classes because it's looking at all of my students' classes across all of my sessions. Uh, same thing with the different category ones, especially if you are a multifaceted uh, location. We do have some people that you know have a cheer facility and they also offer dance classes. So you may be, you would most likely, sorry, have different category ones set up for those different types of classes. So you may or may not want your category ones to, or your discounts already be spread across all of your different category ones. And same thing to allow the multi-class discounts to be counted across different tuition discount rules. So I have mine left unchecked, but again, if I had classes that had rule A and I had another class that had rule B, is it gonna pull all of those classes in together? And I'm just going to check the chat. Okay, awesome. Going good. Uh, next we have your by total hour settings. So how do you count the hours when you are posting your tuition fees? By student or by family? So again, just using the example, if I have three students uh, at my facility, am I adding up the hours for all three people or all three students and giving that fee amount to everybody? Uh, when it is posted in your transactions, let's just say, for example, I had a $75, uh, one hour was $75. No, that's not going to work. Three hours is $300. Then it would show $100 on each of my three students. Uh, and then from here, you can see that multi-student discount that I just showed earlier if you needed to update it. And then again, how do you want it to post when a student enrolls? So do not post, you have that option. Uh, post your tuition using your fee schedule with your multi-student discounts with no prorating. And then the last option is the same, but with prorating. And again, how do you want to count your hours when you're posting tuition fees? Do you want it to add up across all the sessions, so all of the hours for all of your sessions, and or do you want it to count across your category once? So just going to return out of here. So next we are going to go through setting up a discount rule. So to set up your rule, you're going to come to manage rules. And right here, we are going to click on add a new rule. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is you need to name your discount. Uh, be as descriptive as you can. There is a limit to the number of characters, but just so that when, especially if you're on your grid, you can easily see uh, what the different discounts are that different classes would have assigned. So I'm just going to say, call this one Jim Discount. And the very first question is, what type of rule is it? Is it just a multi-class discount? Is it a just a multi-student? Or is it going to be a combination of both? So for today, we are going to call this a combination of both. And then your discount eligibility. So do you give both discounts or do you only give your multi-class discount or only give your multi-student discount when a multi-class discount doesn't apply? And like I just said, if you are, you know, coming in and revamping your tuitions, you know, for the upcoming year. Come in and play with this a little bit. Uh, we can help you out and support as well, just so that you can see the difference when you do a preview of your totals. If you give both discounts and what the difference would be if you're only giving one, if the other one does not apply. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to give only this one. And then as soon as I click this, now I've got my multi-class discount will pop up. So my organization is set to count my classes by students. And then how do I calculate my discount? So how should the multi-class discount be applied? Use the discount rate listed for each class. 
or add up the classes and give the rate listed for the total number of classes. So I am going to use this one. And then specify a unit for your discount. So your options are to either uh, give a discount by dollars or give a discount by percentages. Uh, Fred just joined us from Philadelphia. Hello, Fred. Uh, so just to um, let you all in on a little something, and you might want to put this in the chat, but have you ever, especially if you've given a dollar discount, uh, have you ever ran your tuition fees and seen a red line and all of a sudden you gave somebody a credit? Uh, if you do use by dollar amount, sometimes you do run into the probability of that happening. So let's just say, for example, my multi class discount uh, for three classes, my multi-class discount, let's just say it's going to be $75. And I had a student that's in a class that only has a fee of $50. It's technically going to give them a $25 credit. Uh, we do recommend, if you can, to use percentages. So that is what I am going to do today. Click on percentages. And then you can come in here and you can specify for each. So for one class, there's no discount. And then I'm going to say, uh, for this gym class, we're going to just do 10, 10, 15, 15, 15. And then if you had more, you can add more here. Just open up another box. So I'm just going to leave this at five for right now. And then next, in what order would you like to apply the discount? So again, highest tuition gets the lowest discount. Lowest tuition gets the lowest discount. Uh, if anybody needs me to explain that one a little bit further, just throw it there in the chat and I can explain that if you need. So again, I am going to say highest tuition gets the lowest discount. Just double check the chat. And then next for your multi-student discount, how do we calculate the discounts? So again, use the discount rate listed for each student or add up the student. So I'm just going to say use it for each student. And then you'll see now I have another box pop up. And then again, specify a unit for the discount. So again, I am going to say percentages. And I'm just going to scroll this down here. So right now for one student, I am only... I'm going to keep mine at zero if I want it to. I could say if somebody does have, um, let's just say three students, I could say each student, if, well, student one, let's just say gets 2%, student two gets four, student three gets six. This box right here, if you check this, if I've got a family that only has one student, they would get a 2% discount. Most often that isn't checked, but some people did uh, have a need for it. So that's why we have it there for you as the option. And then again, in what order would you like to apply the discount? So the highest tuition gets the lowest discount or the lowest tuition gets the lowest discount. So again, I'm going to keep it with the higher. And then the next thing that you need to do, do not forget is to click save changes. And now you will see, so right here, I've got my gym discount. So remember before I showed you where it was assigned. So right now the gym discount is not assigned to any classes as well. It's not assigned to um, any families. And then I also forgot to mention uh, your scheduled tasks. If this discount was assigned in an automated tuition posting, uh, you would see that it is assigned or not assigned there. So the very first thing I am going to do right now is I just want to show you the preview again. So if I want to preview my rule, so and you'll see it is $100. And then right here where it says both, it gives you the little alert. Only one discount will be applied based on your discount rule choices. The system will use multi-class first and then try the multi-student. So if I come here and I click on the multi-class tab, I can see what that would be. So I've got class discount for one student. And then right there, I'm just going to close this. I'm just going to come back here. Do 
accessibility. I'm just going to go to my rule. So if I wanted to, I could come in here, I could edit my rule at any time. So you'll see right here, only give one. If I change this to give both, just so that you can see what the difference would be. And I'm going to save it, saved, come back. Now, if I come here and I do my preview, you can see that now I can see everything because it's not asking just for one or the other. So I can see uh, with both discounts taken in, so my multi-class discount and my multi-student discount, exactly what it would look like. So one class, one, and then they're there. So I'm just going to close this. Actually, no, I'm just going to change something right here. I'm going to say my one student so that when we go do your preview, it will be a little bit cleaner. Okay, so next I have just a quick little poll for you guys. I just want to know for everybody that is attending. How do you post your tuition fees? So you will see that if you minimize your chat, that is where the poll uh, will be popping up. But do you use transactions post tuition fees? Uh, do you use Jackrabbit Rabbit's automated tuition posting feature, which we will be going over? And or do you manually post to individual families and or students? So going pretty good. A lot of you are adopting the automated tuition posting. It is great. It saves you a ton of time and you can choose to automatically get email reminders. Awesome. Nice. Thank you, everybody. And I'm just going to jump back to the chat really quickly. Awesome. Okay. So next uh, we are going to go over. Uh, so I have all of my my new tuition discount story uh, all set up. The next thing that I do need to do is assign it to my classes. So I'm just going to save this back here. So you will note right here when we were on this managing your settings there. So in order to, oopsies. In order to uh, assign your discount rule to classes, it is very, very easy. Uh, all you need to do is come to classes, edit all classes. Now, if I were to hit submit now, it's going to bring in everything. And, but for this uh, one that I just set up, I only want it just for a certain category one of classes. So I am going to come down here and I'm going to for my fantastic gymnastics category. And then when I click on submit, so you can see I have five classes within this category one all here uh, as well. If I wanted to, I could even choose to just post to a certain location if you do have multiple locations. Uh, I can come in right now. I can make a global change to all of my fees for my classes and or uh, I can update my billing method. So right now I'm just going to change all of my classes to be $100. Yes. My billing method, it's still going to stay as by class feeds. Yes. My billing cycle, they are still going to stay as monthly. Yes. And then my discount rule. So right now this is the new discount that I just applied. So I'm going to click on that. Yes. And then do I prorate classes? So these already have yes on them. If I wanted to globally change it, I could always select yes here. And then as well, just a note, uh, you do have the option now if the class has a registration fee or not. So I'm just gonna click on save changes. And I return out of this. Just quickly, I'm gonna come back to my gear my tuition and my discounting and look at my rules. And you will see right here under my gym discount right now, class status, it is assigned. So I do have my new gym discount assigned 
to all of my families that have that category one that I had chosen. Okay, so just quickly check the chat again really quickly. Awesome. Okay, so next, the fun part, transactions, post tuition fees. So you will see it does default to by class fee. I have a drop down right here for class fee and by total hours because I do have both options set up within my database. So for today, I'm just going to keep it at class fee, post two classes with this billing cycle. So remember, I did have different billing cycles chosen. I am going to choose all of my classes that are monthly. My billing cycle start date will be August the 1st. And then I can change my transaction date as well if I want it to right here. And I am going to post only to my summer session. Uh, one thing to note, if you choose in your tuition settings, to count your classes across multiple sessions for your discounts, it will still pull them in even if you're only choosing to post to classes with your certain session. And then I'm going to include all the rules, which is what the default is, so my class rule name, or if I only wanted to post just to my gym discount classes and not my classes with no discounts, I could choose that, but I am going to keep everybody there right now. And then next, I just want to briefly talk about what is under your family criteria. So you can post to just an individual family. Uh, you can choose the family's location. Uh, and then you also have the option for setting up your tuition based on a membership type that you choose and assign under the billing info tab and as well an e-payment schedule. So in my database, I've got three set up. I've got the first, the 15th and the 10th. If I do not select anything here, it is going to pull everybody in. And then families with these family discount rules. If I only want it to right now process just for my military families, I would click that. Next, we have your additional settings. So post tuition to active classes only, post tuition to students with enrolled type of trial, and a wait list. Uh, do you want to prorate tuition for future enrollments during your billing cycle? So remember on your prorating options, it was just general, do you prorate yes or no, but then you have the option. So maybe you do prorate for future enrollments, but you might not want to prorate for a drop. So you can come in here and you can deselect that. And then again, include all classes when calculating your multi-class discounts. I'm going to have that one unchecked. And then do you apply tax or not? to your tuition. And you see the chat out of the corner of my eye. Yes, Terry, you can. You can add it um, to as many as you like. You would just need to go in and kind of pick through and filter which category ones you want to have, which discounts, if you have multiple discounts going on. Yes, Shauna, I will go over that in just a little bit. Uh, okay. So next we have your transaction details. So your transaction type, because we're using transactions post tuition fees, your transaction type, it's automatically going to be tuition fee. And then you have your subtype. So right now my subtype for this one would be August. You can add a note in here if you want it. And then an additional discount. Uh, the easiest thing that I can give, let's just say you had to close early uh, this week. There was a water main break and your facility was shut down. Instead of going in and trying to give everybody a credit, uh, I recommend that you just let people know, like, yes, you know, I understand we were shut down. Uh, I will be giving you a discount of 10% on next month's tuition. It just makes things a lot, lot easier for you because it will give everybody an additional discount so that if I were to put in, let's say 10% or $20, that discount is applied above and beyond any of your multi-class or multi-student discounts, as well as any discounts that are calculated with your total hours. And then next we have your advanced detection. So with advanced detection, you can detect duplicate tuition fees. So I'm going to check yes for this. And do I still want to post these 
to detected duplicates, yes or no. Most often you are going to want to keep that as no, that is why it is defaulted there. And then you can match on the student name, plus you can also match on your class, category one, your transaction subtype. And the next is detect drop student fees. So I'm going to say yes. And then post fees to, de to detected drop students. Again, this is kind of all dependent on what you have set up. If you are somebody that under your additional settings, you say that you prorate your tuition for uh, drops within your uh, billing cycle, then you may want to have this selected as yes, because it's going to pr prorate and calculate the correct amount. Uh, if you don't prorate your drops, do you want to detect student fees and do you still want to post yes or no? And then your date. So I am going to just go back from today, just in case, through to the end of August. And the next, I'm just going to preview these fees. So the very first thing you are going to see uh, is our legend. So you will see drop student fee, and you will see they are still checked because that is what I had selected on my settings. So this student here, Justin, they do have a drop. Uh, remember, this is one of the most powerful things with your uh, tuition preview especially if you're newer or you're just set up a new rule and you're not totally sure what's going on, if you click on details, you'll have a little modal pop up here. And it just lets you know there was a family discount rule used as well, my military family for this one. But then you can see I do have a drop date. So my student is only going to attend one of four possible classes. So that is why it prorated off $75 and it did still give that multi-plus discount. So that's why their total is $21.35. Then next we have omitted. So omitted is fairly new. I'm gonna say maybe within the last six months. Uh, some of you uh, may have students, let's just say that are a certain exception or maybe even your, your own child. Uh, is taking classes and previously you would gone in and you would have given them maybe a family fixed fee or a student fixed fee of zero. If you were, you now have the ability from your family's billing info tab to omit a family from posting. So you can see this is what their tuition would have been. So for my Anderson and Daniel's families here, this is what it would have been, but note here, they are omitted from the posting, so they are automatically unchecked right there. And just just reading. And it's reading Josh's question okay and would that be similar to giving everyone a credit for an unexpected closure it would be actually it's just it's a little bit cleaner and it's a lot faster and a lot less complicated for you on the admin side to give that additional discount versus if you were to um let's just say using transactions post annual fees if you put in a negative amount it will give whoever pulls in uh, a credit you're going to have to want to remember the next time that you post fees that you go in and you use transactions uh, find unapplied credits and so just looking at my preview right now i just want to point out just a couple of things for you so right here you will see this is my base fee there of uh, 75. So my fee that they are being charged is $75. My base fee is 60. If you're not really sure what that is about, you will see there's five classes uh, in that month. So that is why. So each class is rated at $15 per class. And then we are charging extra because I said that I do want to charge extra if there are more than <clears throat> the typical four Mondays, four days of the week with 
in the month. I'm just going to right here. You can see right here, I've got my uh, multi-class discount right here. So if I click on my details again, so I can see I've got my base fee. I'm charging extra because of the days of the week that they can meet. I've got my multi-class discount. I've got my multi-student discount, the amount, and then I've got my tax, and then it gives you your total amount for the tuition. So I am just going to right away just back out of this. So one thing that I did not point out earlier because I just wanted to show you how it looks is that I can use this post later. So if I want to post later, I can decide when my schedule is going to start. So I'm going to say at 12. p.m. No, yeah, p.m. So keeping everything like I just had there. I've got everyone there. I'm not including all of my multi-classes. I've got my detection. I can still preview, see what it's going to look like. So it's that exact same preview, but right here you will see I have the option to post later. So I'm going to say monthly. Uh, your name has to be unique. Uh, I can say when it's going to start. So I'm going to say 1248. Oopsie. Mm -mm -mm. Monthly. And I'm just going to change this. No, oh, wait. Sorry. Monthly posting, so it's going to start today. Actually, sorry. Just need to come back here. I was not fast enough with my fingers for the time. Let's see, 51. It's later. Let's see. And then I'm going to. Let's see, this thing, 1251, I'm going to have it recur every month, ends never, uh, a good rule of thumb, if you are using sessions, put that it ends at the end of your session, just as a fail safe, and then do you want to get a reminder, most often you will probably want this GS just for me to keep my email cleaner, I've got mine set to no, and then I've got saved, and then I just get my task here, tell me when it's going to post, the next run will be on June the 12th, but it will be for my fees for the following month. So I'm just going to close this out. And just one second. So when you uh, close out of that, you will uh, be taken to your task management screen. And somebody had asked uh, just a moment ago about using uh, the different options. So you can see I already have an automation set up for all of my families that have a billing cycle for the 15th of the month. Uh, once I have a task set up, I can see it here and click on it. I can view it. So I can just see everything that I've chosen the discount rules that were used, and then all of my settings. So pro-rate close dates, pro-rate discounts, pro-rate extra charge. And then you will notice right here, I do have my 15th of the month e-payments. So again, it's process later, how I want it applied, my family criteria. So you'll see I've got my families with an e-payment schedule of the 15th of the month. And then as well, I've got my transaction criteria, so I'm only just wanting with this automation for the 15th of the month to only pull in tuition fees. So for example, if I had meat fees, swim fees, costume fees that are already on a family's account, it's not going to process their cards for those fees. It will only be just for tuition fees. And you can set up an automation, absolutely. Let's just say on the 20th of every month to process any, let's just say, for example, costume fees, if you had that as a transaction type. There. And just 
going to check the chat really quickly. Christina, great question. I should have shown you that. Okay. Uh, let's just go to my go-to family. I'll show this really quickly. Let's see. So right here on your family's billing info tab. So this is where if I wanted to assign that discount rule to a family, give a family a blank discount and a family fixed fee if I wanted it there. Uh, right here, omit family. So I can omit my families from one or the other or both. So I can omit families from ever having tuition posted and I can also omit families from ever having any transactions processed. So I could click either one or both. So return out of this. And it is 12.51. Let's just refresh this. If you ever need to get to your automation, automation, task management, it's going to bring up that screen. So you will see this monthly posting here, which is the one that I just created. My next run now says it's going to happen on Saturday, August the 12th because my fees automatically came in and were posted. If you're not totally sure, if they post it, you can come here and you can see right now, I do have money outstanding, which I did not have before because all of those tuitions had posted. Okay, I'm just checking the chat, awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna set up an automation uh, to process your e-payments, so transactions process e-payments. So it kind of works almost identically to what I have here. So I can say process later starts now and I'm going to say 50, I'll say 55 PM. Okay. Apply payments to generally it is the uh, oldest fee first. Uh, your payment collection, do you want to collect unpaid fees, but do not exceed the balance? or collect the full amount of unpaid fees and ignore any prepayment. So for example, if somebody did happen to have a credit, uh, you can break it down again by family criteria. So the one that I already had set up, I had my processing just only for the families of the 15th of the month. I'm gonna leave this blank. So it's gonna post for everybody. And I'm gonna keep my posting for this one of tuition fee. And I'm just going to click on, oopsie process later. So you will see this is the amount that I've got that needs to be processed. Okay. Tuition. Okay. And again, you can end it if you want. Whoopsies. And I want it to be monthly. Next and then save. And I am just going to close this out really quickly so you can see I've got this payments here. So note my next run right now, this is why this one is at the top, because it says it's going to run today, uh, June the 12th at 12.55 p.m., which will be in just one minute. And I am going to quickly check the chat again. here to my dashboard. So note my amounts here. Also note my revenue graph here. And let's go to transactions. I want it to check. So right here is where I would check and manage my automation. Uh, somebody did ask the question, and once I create the automation, is there any way to edit it? Let's just say if I came in here, can come here and then I can edit what I have selected. So when it comes to editing, you can only basically just, you know, edit your name and whether you get emails and when it ends, uh, if you made a mistake and you need to go back in and redo it, you also have the option. You can see right here, this one right now says processing. So it's actually going through right now and doing it. You can actually come in here, you could pause an automation and you can also delete an automation. So, and truth be told, I had 
probably 15 automations until uh, just last week. And I came in and I cleared them all out to make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so I'm just going to come back here. So you'll notice right now my aged accounts are right at zero. So without me going in, doing anything at all, my tuition posted automatically. And then all of my credit cards posted automatically. Uh, just a couple of quick thing. So that is everything to do with, you know, setting up your automation, setting up your tuition and your discounting. Uh, just a couple of quick kind of tuition housekeeping rules for you. Uh, you will want to, especially if you give credits, come in here to transactions, click on find unapplied credits. Remember to backdate it here. So that way you can see any credits that may need to be applied to uh, accounts after tuition have been posted. And then as well, under transactions, so I just showed you where you can see your automation, but under my recent transactions, I can see my recent tuition fees and my recent e-payments. So for example, if I processed everything and I wasn't sure what happened with one particular family, I can come here and it will actually bring me up all of the details. So remember, this was my automation that automatically posted, but I can see exactly what was posted to uh, which student, which family, which class. And then same thing under transactions, recent transactions, you can look at your e-payments. I highly, highly recommend add a task on your dashboard if you need to, to come in and check this because you can check your details. So again, this was a task and it was automatically done for my payments. And then I can click on my details right here. So I can see I've got all of my successes there. Uh, I come here to transactions, recent transactions, e-payments. It's trying to look for one that has a discrepancy. So this one right here, this task monthly. So, you know, I processed 13, but I'd had a total of 17. If I come here and click on it, Difference I can now not see your screen. Oh, Sorry yeah. to interrupt. That's okay. I want them to see it. So just a sec. Uh, screen share. This one? Nope. This one? Up there. Okay. Got it. There. So, yeah. So when you come under transactions and your recent transactions for your e-payments, you want to come here that way I can see which family's cards had declined and then if I need it to click on them and send them a quick email and just a moment okay uh, I'm just double checking the chat again for questions really quickly thank you Rebecca for grabbing some of those and then another thing that you will want to check as well when you are going through is under reports. I do have my favorite. It is your tuition oopsies, reports, tuition, not posted report. Feel free to open up anytime. So you can change your enrollment. So I could say everybody enrolled from today until let's just go because I posted oopsies or August the end no tuition fee posted on or after a certain date or in between dates so I'm going to say no tuition fee posted on or after today and then if I hit submit it's thinking so these are people that didn't have tuition posted just for these classes on that summer session. So you can come in. So I know that I had purposely left these families out uh, just so that I could have them to show you as well. Um, any families, if you have families omitted, they will show up here as well. Okay, and that is it. Just stop my screen. OK. 
Okay, so I'll just give you guys all just one sec in case you have any questions. I know we are a little bit over, uh, but that is absolutely okay. Awesome. So that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, just remember, stay in touch with us. If you get frustrated, you get stuck, you're not totally sure about adopting a new feature, please just reach out to Jackrabbit Support. Uh, you can always send us an email as well at support at jackrabbittech.com. And like I said, you can always get access to all of our webinars. And now I do have a little treat for all of you. So Amber over on our marketing team, uh, they are right now doing a, an event this week called Jackrabbit Connect. Uh, she does have an on-demand uh, presentation slightly related to this, and it's called Your Five Tuition Tips to Ensure You Aren't Losing Out on Revenue. So I highly suggest if you can, just click on the watch now, bookmark it, save the link, um, and then that way uh, when you have time, you can go in and look at this. Oh, you are most welcome, everybody. Awesome. So that is it for me. I hope you all have a great week. Good luck with setting up all of your tuition. Uh, if you get stuck, you do have the option of setting up a direct one-on-one -on -one phone call with a support person. Uh, they will log in with you through your database and help you get everything all set up for you. And that is it. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Bye.